Hello and welcome to Middlesex Now. The show that brings you everything that's happening around campus, live of course, from our state-of-the-art Grove studio. Ooh. And that always, our fantastic house band here and now will be here providing the music for us today. Here guys, coming up on today's show, we hear from the good people at RAG, that's raise and give to you and me, on what they do and how you can get involved. And we also have a look at this week's MatCam, where there's something spooky let loose on campus. But first off, we have a special report on student accommodation. Yes, with the cost of living for students becoming more and more difficult, we are all concerned about whether we can afford a roof over our heads. So our reporter Farah dropped in on a typical student house to get the lowdown on house sharing and what you need to know these days when looking for a term time address in London. Well, five Middlesex students live. They are all paying 520 a month, which comes to 2,600, which means this house gets 31,200 annually in rent. I'm going inside to discover if, it's, if this house is worth that and ask the students who live here what they think. Do you think 520 a month is worth it for this house? No. Why do you think? Uh, when we went to view this house, um, it looked like the best one that we viewed. Um, it had carpet, it was spacious, the rooms were a lot bigger than what we lived in before. Then when we came to move in, we realised actually it wasn't what we'd looked at. Um, the room, there was a lot of problems with the rooms. Um, there's like mould in the bathroom, in Charity's room there's mould. The kitchen floor had raised where there was a leak behind the sink. Like, it's nothing what we looked at. And I just think it's ridiculously priced. If you were to live both in this house by yourselves, you would pay 2,600 and it costs 1,358 a month to rent a three-bed flat in Barcelona and fly into London four times a week, which means by living in Barcelona, you'd be saving 1,242 a month. How do you feel about that? First, the charity. A bit miserable that I'm here. <laughs> and how would you feel that? Oh, I feel like crying, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sitting in this house cold and I could live in Barcelona. What advice would you give to students looking for housing in London? What to both of you? Consider all options. Don't just take the first house you see. Yeah. If you can't get into halls, then look everywhere as much as you can. Because it's very, very hard to find a decent house. What about you, Jared? What advice would you give to students? Um, yeah, just to keep looking around and um, look at where if you want to live close or far away, see if you could, it's possible for you to commute. Well, there you have it, Barcelona or Hendon. Tough decision. That's all from me, Farah. Wow, that really does show the importance of viewing houses before you put down deposits. Please, please be careful. You need a fun experience and you don't want to ruin it by living in a dump. If you need any help with your current living situation or want to start looking for somewhere to stay, just email any inquiries to acom at mdx.ac.uk. Now, you've probably seen all the crazy things going on around campus at the moment. It's a little like a fairground at times, and that is all down to the people of RAG. Yes, Raise and Give are a charity set up by the Student Union, and here is Rob with the Vice President Sophie to tell us more. Raise and Give are RAG as a prefer to be known, a part of the Student Union whose aim is to fundraise and support charities locally, nationally and internationally and also their own sports teams and societies. The word RAG is thought to be from the Victorian era where students took the time out of the busy schedules to collect rags and clothes for the poor. A lot of UK universities hold these RAG based events and Middlesex have brought this here now. Let's go check them out. Hi, I'm Sophie McKay, I'm RAG president. I've been president for a year now. Um, I'm also a nursing student. Raise and Give, it's a um, student-led society. It's kind of a society that's joined onto the union as well, so we get funding from the union and support from them, and then it's all run by student volunteers. It's time for Raise and Give. It's been around, like, in some universities for about 100 years, but for Middlesex, it's been around for two years. I met this guy at a barbecue, and he was like, hey, have you ever heard about RAG before? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So um, he set up RAG. alumni can get involved in RAG. It's a £10 membership which includes your hoodie. We do campaigns, events, um, adventures, challenges, raids, collections um, and loads of fun stuff. It's 
great through employability and you meet some awesome people, you meet like, like-minded people, like I met all of my best friends through RAG and we've got Kilimanjaro, um, so for three weeks you go to Tanzania, you work in a primary school for the first week and you climb Kilimanjaro for the second and then you climb down on your third and then you've got a couple of days to like relax and buy some presents. We've also got um, the pub quiz um, every Wednesday um, at the Padder Ring and we've got a um, pub crawl in Camden every month so that's a good thing. So the next time you see some crazy challenges going around campus, make sure you get involved because the money goes to a great cause. And if you want to find more information about RAG here at Middlesex, go to www.facebook.com slash Middlesex RAG and like their page. And joining us in the studio right now is Star VT RAG legend Sophie McKay. <laughs> Hi Sophie, thanks for coming in today. So tell us what's next for Raise and Give. So every Wednesday we've got the pub quiz, um, so that's next Wednesday. And then on the 12th of December, we've got our next big pub crawl in Camden. Okay. Mm, that sounds nice. So you've graduated now, but going back to our report earlier, did you have any troubles with accommodation when you were a student? Yeah, so like when I left halls, it's really hard to find a house. And then when you do find a house, it's expensive or it's not like that, that great. Mm. So yeah, a lot yeah. of students have that problem. Yeah. I had that problem last year as well. Really? So um, back to RAG. How do you get tight students to park their cash? So we're all students and we go around, so I think students just see that um, they can give money to charity and it's such a good mm. cause. And you get something back from it. So if you go to the pub quiz, or the pub crawl, sorry, you get a t-shirt. Um, so mm. yeah, you get something back from oh, it. That's okay. nice. Okay. So what has been RAG's most successful event so far? It's probably the pub, the pub crawl <coughs> in Camden. Yeah. We raised over a thousand pounds for charity. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you were the Vice Chancellor of uni for one day, what would you do? I'd cancel all lectures <laughs> and make the forum bar open earlier. What would you That's do? such a tough one. I'd probably make all food and drink on campus and have a massive party. Mm. Okay, cool. <laughs> so where does the money go to that rag mix? Um, so all of the money goes to charity. Um, so it can be any charity, whatever students want it to go to. But mostly we're doing it for Future Sense Foundation and Soft Power Education. Okay. Yeah. That's mm. nice. So um, um, what's the amount raised and target by RAG? So last year our target was about 10 grand and we just, just came below it, but this year we're aiming higher for 15 grand and so far we've got over 4,000, so All it's right. going great. Well, That's thank cool. you, Sophie, for coming. We, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be Middlesex now without a, whack, a Mackey whack cam. And this week we're not going to disappoint. We must warn anyone with a fear of a clown to look away now. <laughs> I'm going to be able to sleep at night. <laughs> that could be a way for Rag to raise money for Sophie, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think it's time for our next guest, whose work is selling around £10,000 a piece. Yes, his artwork has been acclaimed worldwide, with the Daily Mail calling him a young genius. Everyone, please welcome Kelvin Okafor. <laughs> So welcome, Kevin. What's it like to be back at Middlesex? Oh, it's, it's wonderful. You know, I was in the Cat Hill campus. I wasn't on this campus. Okay. But looking at this new campus, it's kind of nice how it's laid out. It's okay. amazing. That's mm. nice. Before we go into the questions, sure. I'd like to state that both you, both you and Cheers Kelvin have the same surname. Yeah. I think you guys really need to look back into your family tree <laughs> and find out what's going on We there. should have a look, yeah. shouldn't we? We could be cousins or something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tell us about your work being held at the Albemarle Gallery in Mayfair. That sounds really interesting. So sure, I'm incredibly honoured. You know, it's one of the top galleries in Mayfair. Yeah. I have a solo show next year in May, May wow. 8th. Mm. So I'm just trying to build my portfolio have it to present for that gallery. Wow. It's Thank amazing. I'm honoured. That's oh, great. That's nice. So what artists have inspired you? Well, artists that have inspired me, I would say it's mostly the greats, like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. Not just because of their work, but because of them as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, they were able to really utilise and stretch the capacity of the human mind. They mm -hmm. weren't just artists, they were inventors, curators, you know, mm -hmm. poets, writers, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for me, that, that shows me that there's just not one field we can pursue in life. We mm -hmm. can chase so many things and master so many things as well and inspire so many people in, in the course as well. Inspirational. You've created a great range of artworks. Thank you. Which, out of all the artists that you haven't probably drawn, which ones would you like to draw? You know, honestly, like I don't have a particular person I would want to draw right yeah. now, but I'm more captivated by people that I just meet, like ordinary people, friends yeah. and family, people that I see on the road or street. And um, it's just about trying to capture an essence and a personality about them. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't have to do with their, you know, their status, you know, just an ordinary person who I feel captivated by. So I guess you could do a picture of me then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> Did you expect to get so much acclaim from critics so early in your career? Honestly, hand on heart, like, it, it blew me away. You know, um, I graduated in 2009 and mm. since then I've just been trying to build a portfolio. And it's been, you know, I can't mind say it's been an easy road. Financially and emotionally, it's been quite a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, but last year was the first year that I tangibly put my works into any exhibitions, yeah. you know, and um, I was in the War Galleries as one of the youngest artists. Mm. From there, I was in a national open art competition where I won a prize, mm -hmm. the Visitor's Choice Award, and the public voted my work to win. Out yeah. of 200 artists, they voted wow. my work to win. And mm. for me, it was like a snowball effect. It was building mm. and building and building. Yeah. And very early in the year, like I found myself on the BBC and then from then it's just been going up wow. and so appreciative. We can see some of your artwork on the screen here, but we are lucky enough to have some of your amazing artwork in the studio today. That's right. Beautiful picture yeah. of Beyonce there. Wow. So how long does the process actually take you? On average, 100 hours. 100 hours on average. Wow. Depending on the scale. This is one of my very earlier works. It's 2011 this was done mm -hmm. and this was 87 hours. Um, now I'm working like triple the size, mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a long process, but mm -hmm. 100 hours is just 100 hours to me. Like wow. for me, it's, it's all about the actual process and mm -hmm. just having the work finished to how best you feel it's finished. You know, I don't really keep track of time, mm -hmm. but I know that I do 12 hours a day and I usually oh. draw for two weeks. Oh wow. Right. So what's the best advice you could give to artists as a future here at Middlesex? Honestly, just keep doing what you're doing you know if you, you came into university to, to study a craft or to learn a subject mm -hmm. you know you should you should you know go through with it you know unfortunately many of my friends that I was in uni with my peers they they went to the security side and just got an ordinary job you know mm -hmm. so they can pay the bills they didn't really pursue what they really wanted to initially mm -hmm. because you know chasing a dream is almost like a childish yeah. fantasy but yeah. if it's a passion if it's something you love to do mm -hmm. you'll persevere you wow. know and True. I can only tell them to keep going yeah. and mm -hmm. keep doing what you love to do. We hear you're working on a drawing tutorial DVD demonstrating your techniques. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. Like, you know, um, I draw my drawings, as you can see, like um, it has, it's in the genre of photorealism. Yeah. You know, and most people, when they see it on a photo or on the screen, they think mm. it's just a, a photo, photo yeah. you know? So I think it's important just so people can actually see the, the technique and the process it takes to create one of my drawings. So. Mm. I'll be, you know, narrating over the video, just showing people the sort of tools I use, the pencils and yeah. the values, yeah. and really going into it so people can engage with the work and feel That's inspired. amazing. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. And if you want to know more about Kelvin, log on to his website, www.kelvinokaforart.com, or you can find him on Facebook or Twitter, and those dresses are now on screen. Okay, it has come to that time in the show for... Challenge Now! Yeah, so this week... Yes, so this week's challenge in honour of our guest Kelvin is pencil drawing. Dami and I must draw each other in one minute and you, Kelvin, will pick the winner, yeah? <laughs> so how do you feel about that, Kelvin? Exciting, I'd like to see what you guys draw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go over to the challenge area. Yeah. If you could stand here and then give us a minute and then you can pick who you think is best, yeah? Are you yeah. ready to start the stopwatch? You are you, are you ready? That's the question. You no, ready? I'm not. Okay. Let's we'll start now. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, I'm so gonna start. When, when you're ready, tell us to go. He's start, go, he's started. it's started. Okay. So you're five seconds behind. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna do his head, okay. yeah? Just his face. I'm doing your head at the moment, doing your uh, little bang fringe. I really can't draw, so this is not easy. I like the aggressive strokes you got there, like it's, it's quiet. <laughs> Going on to her eyebrows now, trying to do those defined eyebrows. Wow. What seductive eyes. Your eyes yeah. at the moment. I need to get the facial hair in. So how am I doing so far? So, uh... Bear in like... mind, I ain't drawn since like <laughs> primary school. And I'm going on to her pointy nose. How long we got left, Calvin? Got a few seconds left. A few oh, no. seconds. Stop. Oh. Stop. Oh, yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> I feel. Don't, don't don't judge me too harshly because you know I'm not an artist like you. But yeah. <laughs> In terms of proportion, I think my man over here has it done. Oh, no. Hey. <laughs> I'm gutted. Uh. So what? Do you have any critiques for us on the drawings? Like, mm -hmm. um, well. I said it's 100 hours on average for me to draw. You guys already had like a minute, so. Yeah. I could just say keep practicing, you know, <laughs> keep studying your subject and yeah. just yeah. let it flow naturally, no pressure. <laughs> Can't Thanks. rush out. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Calvin, what can we expect from you in the future? Does it include your solo show to be held in May 2014? Absolutely. May 8th is a solo show. Okay. I have a new body, a big body of work to have there. Mm -hmm. And um, you could just expect for me to just build my portfolio and hopefully visit this school and give okay. like a talk as well. That'd be lovely. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's all so exciting. So thank you for being here today. Thanks Here's a little you. gift from Ooh. the union. As you can see, we're all wearing ours. Oh, um, it's from much. the art and design faculty. How lovely. Thank you very much. That's right, you're welcome. <laughs> that's a beautiful badge, better than our colour purple. Yeah, you're purple. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's all we've got time for today on this week's Middlesex Now. Yes, many thanks to our guests for today, Sophie and Calvin, our wonderful studio audience and all of you for watching wherever you are.